my name is Rachel Pollock. I'm going to go over my interdisciplinary project. Um, I'm with Miss Guinea at University S Academy um, with ninth grade algebra. So for phase one for the data collection, um, I talked with Miss Guinea and she said that University S Academy has a strong focus on the inter interim assessment and the explorer as for ninth graders. Um, they really focus on standardized tests and getting students ready for the ACT. Um, she said that one of the biggest issues was that students have a hard time understanding what the questions are actually asking. Um, so to work through this, they started doing 30 for 30, which is every day they do a question from the interim assessment and they go over it and then Miss Eugenie goes over the percent of students that actually got it correct. This percent is usually pretty low. Um, so after observing and talking with Miss Eugenie, she decided and I decided that it would be best if we went over, if I went over math vocabulary because of, because of the large struggle that our students are having with it. Um, so for phase two, planning the actual lesson plan, this for me was the most difficult of the stages. Um, I started just trying to plan like a traditional vocabulary lesson, which I ended up thinking was extremely boring for both me and the students. Um, so I threw this one out um, and I started trying to plan something that was more interactive and fun for the students to learn the vocabulary. Um, this part of the, le the lesson planning, the more interactive one, took me over five hours to plan, so it was a lot more in-depth and it took a lot more time. Um, it seems like this type of lesson is more difficult to plan. Um, here is my actual lesson plan that I ended up writing for this. I have in it my objectives, information, assessment, the schedule, um, and then an overview of each of the activities and a little description and then materials needed and then just some additional notes and stuff. Um, so then for the actual teaching of the lesson, I did a variety of activities. I started with a do now that um, took about less than five minutes and then I did a vocabulary matching game which was about 10 and then I guess the word game at the end or towards about halfway through. Um, this I, again my main goal is to make this as interactive as possible for the students um, and actually forcing them to get out of their seats and move around the classroom. Um, I used the Freer vocabulary me method for this um, and the students actually it seemed like they really liked it. They were participating and one of the things that was I accounted for was noise level and it was just as loud as I had expected it to be. Um, so now I'm going to go through the actual phases of each of um, the parts of the lesson that I did. So first was the do now. The students took out a sheet of paper. They were given four questions and it was multiple choice. And then they were, I picked four students to come and write their responses on the smart board. Um, this was the most difficult of the vocabulary words so I made it multiple choice so that the students had a better chance of um, being successful with this. So this is what it looks like, or what it looked like. We did probability, correlation, Cartesian plane, and infinity. Um, next was my vocabulary matching act activity. And for this one, I handed out, um, I made 20 index cards. 10 of them had a vocabulary word, and 10 of them had a vocabulary definition. And then the students were told to get up out of their seat and find their match, and then get back seated again. Um, I made sure when I passed these out that I gave one class the word and one half of the class the word and the other half of the class the definition so they would actually have to get up and move around and find their pair. Um, and then once they found their pair I had them read out loud the definition and the word that corresponded to it and the rest of the class raised their response cards about whether or not they agreed, disagreed, or were not sure. Um, finally was the guess the word game um, for this. I originally brought word banks for the kids because I was afraid that they would have a more difficult time um, identifying the words, but they actually had a much better time at it than I thought they would. Um, to find the words that I was going to actually use for these games, I used the ACT practice book and um, interim assessment results and then just class observations to find common words that they were having a hard time with. Um, for the game, they were given two hints. First was, uh, like the this was the Freyer model. First was the pictures, examples, not examples, and then the second was the actual vocab word. If they identified the word with the first time around, they got two points, and the second time they would get one. And if they got it wrong completely, then the other team had a chance to steal the word. 
So the class was divided up into two equal teams. And then each team had a scorekeeper and a spokesperson. Um, so this is just an example of like what the Freire model would look like. So you have your word, characteristics, examples, and examples, and a definition. And I really like this model for um, vocabulary, and I think that this is something that I'll definitely use in the future with math. Okay, so then this is an example of how the actual game worked. So first the students were given just two pictures. This is an example of what it's showing. This is the equation for that. If the students were just to get it with these two hints, then they got the two points. Then if they didn't get it, then they would get the definition. And if they got this, they would get one point. And then if they didn't, the other team would get the chance to steal it for one point. And then if they got it correct, then the word would show up. And then this is just another example of the same thing. Here we are, I have two examples, then definition and the word. And then here's one more, a pair of lines. Um, for this one, I used real world examples, which I really liked because it gave the students more understanding of where they can actually see this kind of math out in the real world. Um, and then finally, here's my reflections from the actual lesson. Um, over, these are some changes I would make, overall changes for the entire lesson. One of them was working on my nervousness level throughout the video. When watching it, I felt like I could definitely see like how nervous I was. It was kind of standoffish. And then interjection of voice. Um, and then the students identified the words much more easily than I thought they would. So I think in the future, I would make sure that I did incorporate some really difficult words that they found hard to identify. And then track of time. Um, and then as far as instructions, the students, there was a lot of confusion with giving instructions because I didn't have anything visually for them to see as far as instructions. So I think that I would start each of these lessons in the future with the directions posted on the board. Um, and then attention of whole class, I had a hard time with that. And then um, like gathering attention and wait time with that, waiting, giving wait time after giving instructions for them to just calm down. And also measuring the effectiveness of the lesson is um, student feedback was good, but as far as actually knowing how effective the lesson was, I didn't really have that best of good of a way to measure the effectiveness of it. Um, and that, so then I'm going to go through each of the parts and little changes that I would do. So for do now, uh, for the do now, I in the future I would give more um, letter choices and there were questions so that the students didn't couldn't just do process of elimination. They had to look more into the actual definitions and words to find the meaning. And then um, making it a little more lengthy because it was really quick and that gave time for students to get off task. Um, and then just changes for my guess the word game. Um, trying to keep the noise level down a little bit more because it was getting extremely loud. Um, and then for that I need to work on more of randomizing the word order because it seemed like one team had an unfair advantage of getting the more easy words compared to the other team getting the more difficult words. Um, written directions again, and then also looking at group sizes because although it seemed like a lot more students were interacting, it also seemed like some students were getting left behind, so considering the group sizes in the future I think would be important to make sure that everybody is being involved and interacting. And then also at the end I had a tie and I didn't plan a tiebreaker activity, so I kind of just winged a tiebreaker activity, so in the future I would probably have to get something planned out if we didn't counter the tie. Um, and then the vocabulary matching activity, again, the instructions thing, and preparing more of how we're going to present the definitions when the groups get together and presenting how to deal with um, pairs that had the incorrect definition. Um, these are my positive reflections. Um, Mostly it was just that students really liked it, they seemed like they enjoyed it, and then also allowing students to move about the classroom, made sure students were awake and that they were um, doing it, and then also just teaching this type of lesson is a lot more fun.